Hello, Jeremy here with A Custom Geek, and I just wanted to go over um, transferring stuff to a breadboard. So here I have my Arduino project that I, I made up, and it's um, it's a wonderful project. It, uh, there's a potentiometer here, and if you turn the potentiometer, uh, the LED pulses slower, and if you turn it the other way, it pulses faster. This should sell mil billions, really, when I get it done. So what is the next step of making this? Uh, something a little bit more permanent because obviously uh, you have the cost of the LED, a resistor, potentiometer, and a $30 Arduino. So for messing around uh, and a lot of development stuff, what I do is I put this on a breadboard and I wanted to show you how that's done. So uh, if we tuck this guy to the side here and we move in our breadboard, we can see uh, here that I have the same sketch running, my brilliant speed pulse LED. So uh, this is the same thing running with a uh, with an Arduino bootloader with a 328. And to make this standalone, what you need to do is you need to have your crystal. Uh, this is running at 16 megahertz. Uh, I have the caps um, that are going to the crystal to the ground. Uh, you can see right here; these are 22 picofarad. And then uh, I have my power and I have my ground. And then I just simply have, this is pin number 11. You can reference the image with the pin numbers on them uh, for the raw chip. Uh, Lady Ada also makes great stickers for these at adafruit.com. Uh, this is 11 going over here to a resistor. And the LED is going to ground. Power to my potentiometer. And this is going to um, uh, analog input 4 or pin 18. And uh, over here, I have an FTDI adapter. And then this is just providing power. And uh, this right here is, this will work without this, um, but this will power it. Now, here's what I do a lot, is when I'm working on something, if I want to change something in the sketch, uh, these are communication lines. And so uh, the first one is receive, and it goes on pin number 3 to the transmit pin of the 328. Uh, transmit on the FTDI goes to the receive of the 328, which is pin number 2. Um, Sorry, I'm not looking at the camera here. And then uh, reset here, if you put a one uh, microfarad cap uh, in between the reset pin and your uh, DTR of your FTDI cable, uh, that will automatically reset this guy when you upload new software. So uh, if I wanted to change the sketch and say, um, you know, I want to change something, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll change something. But if I wanted to do that, and I want to go ahead and hit the uh, the upload button. What that will do uh, is that will do that automatically without me taking this chip out or having to do anything else. So I can dump new software here while it's still on the board. It's excellent for uh, debugging and just tweaking your code to what uh, to get it the way that you want it to run. So uh, after you do this, you can go to uh, a perf board if you want to get a little bit more permanent and test the size, like. I don't have this done on a perf board. Uh, just to show you some examples here, I have, um, what is this? This is a uh, strobe unit to an outside um, soffit strobe. Uh, I have did this I did this guy in a post a little bit earlier. This is a 328, and it's just on a board. Uh, it's just basically a clock that shows the capabilities of multiplexing. Um, not sure if I did a post on this or not, but this is a color converter, among other things, depending on which button you hold when it uh, when it boots up. And so this is uh, the same thing here. I have my 328, I have my crystal, and I have my two caps. And that's pretty much what you need uh, to get it to run. I put a um, a, a 0.1 microfarad cap here so I could bring out FTDI headers so I can take my FTDI and plug it right here and dump new software in here. Um, and then uh, even on, on different boards, this is something, I'm going to dig this out here. This is something I'm working on. It's the same thing. So uh, this is a really, really handy way to um, develop your projects is to get a 328 on a breadboard. You can go here. Now you can do this with an Arduino too, but what this does is I have this here, and then I have this other breadboard here, and then I have my Arduino that's, that's free to use because now I can take this uh, Arduino that was running the sketch, and I can do something else with it. I have about four of them, and they're always plugged into something. And I always seem to need more. But the answer to that is to put your project on a breadboard. Until you run out of breadboards, then you need more of those. But um, you can uh, you can get, of course, more of those. So I hope this helps. Um, there will be a schematic up. And um, 
uh, post any questions you have, and I'll, I'll see if I can answer them. Thanks much. Bye-bye. So one last thing I wanted to mention is uh, where do you go from here? And uh, I, I'm not sure I'll do an Eagle tutorial uh, on this post. I probably won't. But um, the next thing you need to do is uh, maybe go on Eagle and get a board made. And so you go from this guy here to um, getting an actual printed PCB made. And then now you have uh, what a permanent solution is for your, your project here. So you have your, your, your board all set. And uh, from here, then you can start thinking about going into producing kits. Or if you just want a really, really nice project, uh, you have really, really nice boards to work with. So I'll talk to you later. Thanks.